speaking of Bernie Sanders, let's talk about Bernie Sanders. Um, Touche. <laughs> uh, there's this uh, Vox article. So let me tell you that how I stumbled across this. I don't I don't read a ton of Vox. I, I tend oh, are to. Oh, are you kidding? It's my favorite news. Source yeah, they're they're when always I'm trying to so get sick. Fair. <laughs> um, uh, so my mom actually t- uh, group text messages th- this to my brothers and I, um, who we sometimes chit chat politics and we all see things very differently. Um, but she basically was saying, hey, you know, the, the, uh, you know, a lot of folks really like this article. It really looks like, you know, people are being convinced that Bernie can do well in this race. And isn't this great? And I'm reading this article and I'm just like. They are so begrudgingly writing this article. They're like, well, we're going to, okay, we made these rules for doing an article to try to present the best case for each of these candidates. And we say these rules, they said, if they're polling above 10% in national average and damn it, Bernie's polling above 10% in national, fine, we'll do Bernie Sanders. Um, so it's, it's, I'm not going to go through point by point on the article, but everything is just dripping with this, oh, um, he says he wants to do these things, but he can never really get those things done. So don't worry about that. Um, he's, he's a crazy kook and a crazy loon. Um, he, can't, he doesn't understand, you know, he doesn't know how to get things done legislatively. He's except not all that, that good. He's the amendment king and more right. than anyone it, else. Right. Except for that. Um, and then th- they conclude basically by begrudgingly saying, uh, that he, well, essentially that he's electable, that, that he has enough support that he consistently gets reelected in, uh, in Vermont, which is a conservative, trend conservative state. They actually mention here. So they say, if you were designing an electability candidate in a lab, you would not come up with Bernie Sanders. You'd probably come up with someone like moderate Montana governor, Steve Bullock, who recently dropped out of the race after receiving essentially no public support or donations. It's weird that your lab would come up with someone that is so clearly unelectable. Can I just say that someone at Vox probably knows that guy personally and that's why he got the plug. I mean, that that there's probably nothing special about him. And that's what I really, that's why independent media, and I'm sorry to just jump in, is so important. The media tells us who's electable. Right. You know, and that's, that's why this is so important that CNN has to begrudgingly admit this about Bernie Sanders. Um, I, I just thought it was, this article was too good. I wanted to, my my brother texted this in their little conversation today, and I thought it was the, the the best way to sum it up. He says, I found this article quite strange. It's trying to make the best case for Bernie by calling his ideas unrealistic and repeatedly dismissing his supporters. It basically says, well, Bernie actually... Uh, Wait, well, Bernie's actually a unity candidate because moderates fall, will fall in line behind him to beat Trump, unlike the spoiled Bernie bros who would just rather take their ball and go home if their guy doesn't win. And also, quote, his ideas are loony, but they won't go anywhere. So he's actually a safe candidate. Right. Which is actually part of the point they're making, like, uh, oh, he wants to make too many things. He wants to do too many things. Oh, but don't worry, it'll be banal. He won't be able to get those things done. Oh, so that's that's a plus that he won't do the things that he's trying to do. Um, My brother continued on here uh, and said, it's a very backhanded compliment sort of article, although it does get into his actual electability numbers and his track record of getting things done in Congress. So there's some good as well. And that's kind of how I ended up reading it is there's some good in here. There's some there's some that will convince those who haven't heard about Bernie Sanders since the beginning of the 2016 election cycle, that there's something still worth looking at in that campaign. And I think for a lot of like MSNBC Democrats, um, he has just been so ignored and so maligned for so long that it was just like, I think there were some of them that are like, oh, is he still running? Like, I think there are still people who are like, oh, he's still running. And then the fact that you just get a couple of articles that are like, yeah, he's He's got a lot of money, he's doing well, and he's probably going to be one of the top contenders in Iowa, and looks like he's got a lock on New Hampshire, and, you know, some some big early states are coming, you know, the, the Carolinas know. look like they're pretty good for Bernie, like, so I guess we have to cover him, like, he might do well. Nevada seems pretty strong for him. Yeah, Nevada seems in particular. Too. So that, this is, this is, this is exactly what we always talk about with Bernie Sanders. This is... If you watch the show for any period of time, you know that this is 
actually kind of funny. And here's an interesting thing on that that you that you just made me think about. If their way of backhanded complimenting him makes people that are scared of him not scared of him and just go, oh, well, I guess if he brings the progressives in who won't vote any other way and then we'll lose to Trump, I guess he's safe if he can't do anything. So I'm going to vote for him thinking he can't do anything, which would ironically for the people that don't like Bernie because they don't like his views. This is actually a really, really good article. Mm -hmm. If they read that, I mean, think about it. If they read that article and again, if you're someone who hates Bernie, he's too left. Too socialist, too progressive. And Vox is like, don't worry, he won't get anything done, but he'll get Trump out of there. I think that actually might be a better article than if they were praising him. Yeah, okay, look, look at this. I want to read this a little bit here. Uh, it's so funny. So uh, Sanders is more banal than people think. Much of Sanders' campaign rhetoric appears to suggest a wildly naive or uninformed understanding of how the American political system operates. Really? Uh, he says uh, we'll completely transform the healthcare system and pass a massive Green New Deal and eliminate uh, all student debt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they say these stances animate Sanders' hardcore supporters who turn his rivals' un- understandable reluctance to sign on to plenty unrealistic series of promises as a litmus test. To veterans of Beltway politics or simply folks who've been around long enough and watch cycles of exaggerated hopes followed by disappointments, this can be troubling. What would President Sanders really think? Uh, uh, Would President Sanders really think that if he just bangs the table loudly enough, a political revolution will allow for top to bottom restructuring of the American healthcare system? Would he reject feasible paths in favor of insisting on ideas that can't pass? So this is just... It can't. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. He's going to keep trying to campaign on this, and everyone's going to be disappointed. But it's not going to work. It'll never happen. I, I want to. I know you want to say something. I want to add one more thing. I always want to bring this up because it always gets forgotten. Vox clearly forgot it. The narrative of the Bernie bro, the narrative of the Bernie or bust movement, is not borne out by any facts. It's just a thing people said. Hillary Clinton in 2008. Oh, those thuggish young 20 to 30 black males that you really got to worry about women, really got to worry about these black whales women that were all helping out Obama. Oh, really, really bad. What are they doing in 2016? Well, uh, well, he, says he doesn't have 20, 30 something black males. Uh, he has white males. Bernie bro, those sexist, homophobic uh, college Bernie bros that think they know everything, but us women, it's almost as if Bernie bro was really just a smear that was racist in 2008 and uh, sexist in 2016, used for no other purpose than to win. And I'll still, you know, talk to people around then they'll be like, well, there's asshole Bernie people. I'm like 10% of people are assholes anyway. What a shock. So you have that. And I also want to remind everyone in 2008, 24% of Hillary Clinton voters defected and refused to vote for Obama. Maybe it's because of that whole uh, Obama boys thing. I don't know. Maybe it's other deeper seated issues. I don't know. And they went to vote for McCain. Whereas 2016, only 12% of Bernie Sanders supporters defected. I was one of them. I'm not going to say I wasn't. But that's about as good as it gets in a primary. You're always going to lose people to attrition. 12% is actually pretty fantastic. So again, anytime someone goes with that, I would actually say don't correct them. Because if enough people, if people, are, if they're genuinely getting worried that like, even though it won't, wouldn't happen, probably maybe, I don't know, I don't want to call out what people are thinking. But if they're going to think that, hey, we're just not going to vote if you don't pick Bernie, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's bizarre that the media keeps treating Bernie Sanders like he's some kind of anomaly in America. Uh, you know, he comes from an immigrant family in inner city America, uh, attended uh, an Ivy League school in Chicago in a, a very segregated, very racist city. Um, and he radicalized, you know, in, in a movement uh, for civil rights. Uh, there's nothing un-American about that. There's nothing crazy or bizarre about that. There's a lot of people like that that are just not in public office as long and as the same person as Bernie Sanders. Um, I'm kind of going with a little bit of a stump that I used in Iowa when I was knocking on doors for him. But, you know, the reason why he can unify the Democratic Party um, and defeat Trump is because his story, his personal story is so powerfully American, so uniquely, authentically American, 
um, how can it not win out to a phony billionaire type of populism based off of xenophobia and especially attacking, you know, the, the global south? Uh, you know, Bernie Sanders is uh, Andrew Jackson without the racism. You know, he is a self-made working class kid that got put himself into the highest throes of government. Uh, really, uh, under, really understands the system. I don't know, you know, they really want to paint him as naive, um, and uh, is, has been proselytizing the entire country. You know, they, the arguments that Biden has been evolving on the issues. Bernie Sanders has been evolving the country to his issues, and that's why he can win. They just don't want to admit that his issues have been right uh, since he's had them, and that they should win uh, once he gets into office. Because that's a fight I'm sure they're they're ready to stop him on. So I'm super conflicted on this article because because um, it's my mom that's telling me that uh, other relatives of ours who are, I would say, more MSNBC Democrat type uh, political um, actors uh, see this as a as a big plus for Bernie. And, and that's it, Bernie's gone up on their ranking list as a, as a result of article this article in particular, but articles like this, I imagine. And it's weird when, how I. I, that, that's what makes me so conflicted as I read this article and all I see is like they hate Bernie. They hate him like they're going to undercut like anything that he has a demonstrable win on. They're going to find a way to be like, yeah, but it's not really that good of a win. Yeah, but uh, and so while I all I see is the the, the vitriol coming from the authors of Vox, um, it's apparently making Bernie more palatable to voters who otherwise are not considering him strongly. So. Yeah. I don't know, I'm in favor of that. So it's weird. That's the, my con conflict on the article. I have to agree with Daniel's take on it that it's um, moderate people that are on the fence. This kind of article is bringing them into the fold, much like in the way, you know, um, a lot of Elizabeth Warren people were bringing a lot of uh, uh, billionaire and, and, and like more liberal people away from Joe Biden into Warren. And people are like, oh no, she's taking those people from Bernie. But these were, these were uh, moderate uh, Democrats that were a, a Horrent, you know, like following Bernie Sanders' ideas abhorrent, but they found it more palatable coming from Elizabeth Warren. Um, they're already acquiescing to the strength of the ideas. This article is acquiescing to the reality that Bernie Sanders is going to win a couple of these states, and there's, you know, and maybe the whole thing, and it might be a good thing. I think that, you know, we are seeing uh, again Bernie Sanders bringing people in just be, by being the consistent figure that he is in politics, uh, with the hope that, you know. Uh, if this keeps going in this direction, because it's still early, that he might actually succeed in passing Medicare for all, a Green New Deal, and tuition-free college. Well, I'll just add this. I mean, on Paul's point, like I, 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 un I know you, Paul. I understand your conflict completely, <laughs> but I also think that it, it, the ends justify the means in this case. If Vox is making moderates like. Again, like your, like Just your take family the, Take the win. Take yeah, the win, Take right? the win. All right, all right. Take, it's, we're good. We got this, Fox. Uh, screw you. Keep making more of these articles. I like them. Good job. You uh, failed your way into success, and uh, I appreciate it. But we should move on to our next story. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, we've got a super chat I oh, think yes. I wanted to get to real quick here. So Kate mentioned, take his ball and go home. He campaigned for Clinton. That is... Very accurate. And it's crazy how like a huge amount of people on the left and in the chat. And again, it's a position that I don't agree with at all, but I understand why people don't like it. Do you see? It's like, how dare he campaign with Hillary? She's against everything he is. And I just look at it like, hey, it was he. he he's a man of his word. He said he would go with whoever won. He did. And now he's here. And now he's at a spot where uh, he is always been in my book as being the next president. But. You know, we're not there yet, so I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but we should move on 